Welcome to this presentation from EGS India on PDM or PLM. What does your company need? Companies looking at ways and means of improving their operational efficiency have been confronted with the dilemma of choosing between product lifecycle management systems or PLM as they are popularly called and product data management systems or PDM. Management teams also are of the opinion that by implementing a PLM or a PDM, their problems and issues relating to their products, customers, and development time would be answered and delivered. There have been numerous situations wherein companies that have invested in these systems took many months, sometimes years, to reach a level of usability. Also, there have been instances of companies that have invested in a PLM but were using it only as a PDM on account of its complexity higher mounting costs and integration issues with other systems already being used. This presentation explores the options available so that management teams can make an informed decision that would save their companies in time, cost and resources. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Let us take a look at the topics we intend to cover. Starting with company priorities and examining the challenges and solutions sought by the industries, we look at what the PLM and PDM have to offer. Then we focus on the essentials of managing products and processes, the architecture of popular PDM PLM framework, and their associated benefits are discussed next, followed by clarifications of common myths prevalent in the industry. We summarize the presentation with a checklist of do's and don'ts that give clarity in the decision making process towards selecting a PDM or a PLM. Top three priorities for any organization are quality, cost, and time. While the order of priorities may change dynamically, they are essentially used in metrics to measure profitability and market share. Quality of a product or a process achieved reliably and consistently helps save on time and money. Costs associated with products and processes are the foundations of profitability. Time, with emphasis on first time right, helps in market share improvement, reduce costs and eliminate inefficiencies in processes. Quality, cost and time form the bedrock on which the future of a company is built. Organizations that have developed the three-pronged approach have been successful consistently over a period of time, as can be seen from recent history. Lack of emphasis on these have depleted companies of valuable wealth. Management teams and companies should have a mechanism or framework for defining, measuring, analyzing, constantly improving and controlling processes. Information driven decision making is key to growth and profitability. PLM or PDM are intended to achieve, help achieve that. The pyramid shown here provides clarity in terms of PLM, PDM landscape and spheres of activity. Finance, sales and distribution and production planning form the bedrock of an organization. Materials management, plant maintenance, human resources management come next. Workflow automation, product costing, quality management systems form the middle tier that provides critical connectivity between operations, finance, and quality. Protection of IPR in terms of data security, knowledge reuse, Design data management and document management system forms the heart of the company wealth. Project management and change management come next, helping to achieve timelines and tracking changes. Business intelligence based on dashboards form the apex of the pyramid that managements use to steer the company towards growth and profitability goals. Manufacturing organizations have seen the benefits of implementing enterprise resource planning systems. PLM encompasses the spheres of activities of ERP, PDM, and project management. Once a clear understanding of the realms of each is known, decision to go with PDM or PLM becomes easy. 
Historically, manufacturing industries have invested in an enterprise resource planning systems to achieve operational efficiency and statistical process control for achieving manufacturing excellence. ERP is a transactional system with an operational efficiency of at least three sigma. Typical HR, purchase, logistics, inventory, among others, are managed using ERP. Similarly, manufacturing excellence is driven by SPC, or statistical process control, process capability, and documented processes that monitor and correct deviations. Only engineering functions lack the visibility, are reactive to situations, and difficult to monitor process and compliance. While bidirectional interactions between operation and manufacturing is streamlined and well behaved, engineering interactions with manufacturing and operations is weak and reactive. An example would be process capability. It is rarely reflected in tolerances incorporated on drawings released by engineering. This compels engineering to look at ways and means of adopting a process centric approach. Now, let us look at the requirements in product management and project management as applied to varied vertical industrial segments. There is a common misconception that PDM or PLM is applicable one only for one or the other. Another unsubstantiated perception is also prevalent. PLMs with complex data structures reflect powerful functionality, robustness and scalability for the future requirements. Whether it is a PDM or a PLM, usability drives effective implementation. Open architecture protects unique business processes. Industry standard framework assures robustness and scalability. Businesses have either products and or projects that need to be delivered. Products could be engineered to order, configured to order, or come under new product, new product development. In the case of projects such as EPC, engineering, procurement, and construction, for example, the systems could be built out of ETO or CTO or both. Configurable products based on family of products and their variants are typically handled by the RFQ or the request for quote process. Engineered to order could involve assimilating varied requirements into a unified process resulting in possibly one of a kind product or a project npd is steered by innovation and developing technology and or designs of next generation products to address challenging business scenarios changed regulations or gap analysis from market research any pdm or plm should be easily configurable for eto cto NPD processes. This is rightfully the area where the PDM PLM architecture comes into focus. When it comes to project management, organizations rely on popular tools such as Microsoft Projects, Primavera, among others. Sometimes manual entries and updates using spreadsheet is also common. The emphasis here is on planning, updating, reporting, and continuous process improvement as indicated by ISO 9000 and other relevant standards. Usually, PLM and or PDM facilitate integration with project management tools as a part of workflow definition and control. Engineering change management driven by customer, supplier, engineering, manufacturing, and the like need to be updated as well for management to know and interpret reasons for delay, cost, and process changes. Notification management helps provide updates on project status to all stakeholders, thereby reducing efforts and enabling real-time information on any project being worked upon by teams, small or large. It is important that any PDM or PLM of choice for implementation addresses the following. Workflow management for capturing and automating the business processes. Notification management for ensuring information is shared and approval processes are complied with. Engineering change management to transparently notify all stakeholders of the imminent changes, their causes, effects, and implications to both upstream and downstream processes. RFQ management 
to deliver upon customer requirements, proposals, and establishment of processes to ensure collaboration among all relevant team members, including suppliers. Project management integration to facilitate project managers to establish WBS, meaning the work breakdown structure, deliverables, stage gates, milestones, buy-in from teams in terms of resource allocation and timelines. Lifecycle status management to auth automatically handle lifecycle states. Transitions and updates based on workflow and approval processes. When the PDM or PLM delivers on these requirements, compliance management becomes a reality and an engineering process aligns themselves with the operations and manufacturing, enabling higher efficiency and necessity for higher profitability and growth. PDM or PLM architecture should enable item-centric as well as file-centric approach. Conventionally, PLM, having evolved from ERP, are item-centric. In item-based design, such as Engineer to Order ETO, one first creates items and item links to represent product, components, and their relationships. Later, links are added to design files and supporting files when these files are available. For example, a product manager might create these items at the beginning of a project. A main item for the product using the product ID from an enterprise resource planning system as the item ID. An item for the product assembly, an item for the product documentation, an item for the software CD-ROM, an item for the power card, a file link to the market requirements for the product, a file link to the specification for the product assembly. Engineering then create CAD files for the assembly and assembly components. Engineers add file links from items to CAD files. Quality engineers can add file links to test reports. As the product approaches manufacturing readiness, sales can check on the item to see this final specification then design review results. In file-centric approach, one designs the product first, then creates items to bundle the design files, assemblies and parts, and supporting documents since product structure is evolving and not known until the final stages. PLM or PDM should then generate the item structure automatically from existing assembly and part files. PDM then creates a main item for the assembly, child items for each part or sub-assembly, and file links to associated drawings. Item generation needs to also create items for each configuration of the product assembly. Item generation from files should be enabled for CAD assembly, part file types, and other file types as well. Web-centric interface helps team members participate in the workflow and approval process, review progress, and obtain needed information even when on travel. Unified approach of item, file, and web-centric architecture helps businesses achieve higher levels of productivity, compliance, and suits changing business priorities and needs. Off late, PLMs have started adopting file-centric approach on account of its inherent advantages for new product development. One of the reasons why PLMs take Long months and even years to implement is on account of trying to use an item-centric approach to NPD. Common myths about PLM, PDM are clarified, keeping in mind that assumptions are more fatal than execution. Let us look at some of the myths to help set the expectations right. PDM is only for the design department. PLM is for the entire company. PDM historically started as a design document management system. Over the last decade and a half, PDM has evolved into a cross-functional, multi-department, truly collaborative framework. PLM was the exclusive domain for workflow, notification, lifecycle management. Not anymore. PDM has evolved rapidly and seen active deployment since. Its genesis has been from the design department or the engineering department. In contrast to 
the PLM that evolved from ERP experience. PDM or PLM, it all depends on priorities and pain points that managements want to address. Today, PDM is used to meet the requirement of APQP, TS16949, 21 CFR Part 11, ISO 9000, among others. These standards are not isolated to design department but encompass the entire organization. Be it quality, manufacturing, engineering or any other department, the teams deal with documents that have versions, revisions, life cycle states, deliverables and a workflow among others. If the PDM can address these, then it is able to address the organizational requirements. The next myth is PDM or PLM will solve our issues and make it profitable for the company. This is a dangerous premise that needs to be avoided. PLM or PDM is a technology enabler. They are not a problem resolution or issue management tool. Profitability or product success depends on many factors. PLM or PDM establishes a defined process. Of course, this depends on how well we define the process during implementation. Actively monitors compliance, provides a mirror on our face in terms of where the current processes lie and where improvements are required. It is a mistaken notion that PLM is a panacea for all else plaguing a company. PLM or PDM enables an organization to streamline its processes, establish accountability, ensure transparency, and analyze a treasure trove of information they help to help achieve continuous process improvement. Knowledge reuse helps avoid recreating data and empowers team to obtain information on a need-to-know basis. Before deciding, on a PDM or a PLM framework, it is important to check out a checklist of broad classification to arrive at functional justification. Essential requirements include business process automation, lifecycle management, data and document management, and finally, architecture and deployment character. It is important that nine considerations coming under these classifications are looked upon in detail. When we are trying to implement a measurable process, change is inevitable. With change comes resistance to change. In order to make a smooth transmission, transition from a paper-based system to an automated process that PADM, PLM promises to deliver, usability becomes a prime motivator for adoption by the users. This is often ignored. As a result, long-drawn PLM implementations ending up as a data storage and retrieval system are far too many to ignore. Whether it is a PDM or a PLM, there is more to it than in the name. This has to be understood and a detailed framework prepared before calling in the vendors to evaluate different products. Metrics that need to be evaluated are shown here. Time, cost, effort, skill set and adaptability are primary deciding factors that need to be understood and evaluated as a part of the selection process. Long drawn implementation time lack of ownership for legacy data migration, complex upgrade processes after going live have left many PLM implementers with not so good experience. Cost overrun as a result of lack of understanding, assumptions, and gap between expectations and delivery should be avoided. Successful implementations have had a scope document clearly laid out to the last detail. Meeting with the PLM users to understand things gone right, things gone wrong, and lessons learned would be a step in the right direction. Key to success lie in asking the right questions to the PDM PLM partner before signing off on implementation. Benefits for the organization should be prime mover for going with a PDM or a PLM. Understanding organization goals and aligning the objectives of implementing the PDM PLM should have the highest priority. Resource requirements, cost of ownership, timeline for implementation, Business intelligence dashboards and standards compliance for audit should be known a priori to gain significantly from the PDM PLM deployment. We hope you enjoy this presentation on the criteria for choosing a PDM or a PLM. Have a successful PDM or a PLM implementation at your workplace. Thank you.